Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for stopping by. People who regularly follow this channel know that I talk about digital technologies and how incumbent companies are using technology to amplify their existing strategy. So in the last few posts, I in my last few video shoots, I actually uh, I actually presented a hypothesis saying that digital by itself is not a strategy. It is an amplifier to an existing strategy and incumbent companies that have leveraged technology to change their business and operating models are the ones who have meaningfully set made strategic choices and delivered their value proposition with the judicious use of technology. I have demonstrated it in the case of Hindustan Unilever, the French retailer Carrefour, and the beauty conglomerate L'Oreal. Continuing with that, uh, with this series, I am presenting the case of the fashion retailer Gap. So with that, let us move to the presentation on Gap and here goes. Presentation is titled, How Gap Has Used Technology and Digital uh, to Transform Itself, Where Digital is a Key Enabler. And there are four parts of the presentation. First, we're going to talk about the Gap's brands and the structural challenges of fashion retailing. What are the endemic challenges that the industry generally faces with the advent of newbies, fast fashion, and so on and so forth. Then we're going to touch upon the fashion landscape and how different price points and fashion vision actually creates a market for itself. With that, we're going to move into in the initial forays that Gap had with big, big data starting from 2014 and then from there on how it transformed its how, how it made strategic choices and used technology to leverage uh, a new operating model. At the end, I'm going to talk about the learnings from Gap. So people who are interested to understand the essence of the story, please stay back till the end and watch the video to the end. Uh, this kind of content requires a reasonable amount of research. Show us some love by uh, liking and sharing the channel as you deem fit. With that, let us move on with the presentation. Gap is a 16.7 billion US dollar house of brands, which has brands like the classical Gap brand, Old Navy, uh, Old Navy, Banana Republic, and Atleta, and has been an authority in American casual style. The mother brand, which is Gap, offers comfortable, clean, classic basics in jeans, khakis, button-down shirts, pocket tees, and so on and so forth. The Old Navy, uh, which was acquired in 1994, completes with mass merchandises and, dis uh, and discount retailers, which is the affordable part of the segment. Then you have the higher end, which is the Banana Republic, acquired in 1983, where luxurious materials and detailed craftsmanship is a treat to the higher end consumer. On the other side, in 2008, it opened a brand called Atleta, which is a women's fitness brand with for a very restricted and a niche market segment. Now, this is what Gap is all about, and it is one of the vanguards of speciality retailing, which basically means that it works on particular segments with unique propositions. Now, if you look at the challenges of the fashion retailing industry, one is obviously with COVID, the change of fashion and the change of the trends and styles when people are working more from home, and which has also led to a certainly uh, muted growth in the trillion dollar fashion industry. Then there is a multi-tiered apparel landscape, and I'll talk about it in a bit, where multiple players are jockeying for consumer mindshare and for position, making it a kind of a red ocean kind of a scenario. Rise of e-commerce, and we are all party to it, and we know it very well, at least in India, where there is obviously lack of footfalls in storefronts, uh, which has an consequence in the distribution model of fashion retailing. Then there is obviously the fast fashion where the product life cycle and the has been shrunk significantly by uh, by fast fashion leaders like Zara and H&M who give very trendy uh, products at reasonably affordable prices, changing the very dynamics of the industry. And after that, there is heavy and free frequent discounting, which has an impact on incumbent brands in terms of their profitability. Now that said, uh, now let's look at the fashion landscape. Now, from the lowest level, which is the private label of retailers like Nordstrom's and Macy's, there is a budget wherein you have affordable uh, fashion, which is where the fast fashion plays out, Zara, H&M, and this is where uh, the Gap brand Old Navy uh, is actually well positioned for Ever 21. Then you have Moderate, where the classical Gap brand is, then you have the higher end, which is contemporary, where the Gap's... Uh, brand banana republic competes with ralph lauren and as you go higher up the high fashion which is the gucci and the prada so so gap is actually 
positioned itself into the mass merchandising segment, the affordable segment, and a higher end through its Banana Republic brands. Now with that, Gap has been using technology to transform itself as have been other retailers. But the most important bet that Gap took was to change the change the role of the creative directors. Typically, fashion houses like Gap had a role called the creative director who was responsible for the brand. These eclectic individuals set the tone of the brand and they decided the brand salience and set the ball in rolling. Therefore, the fashion cycle was long. And over a period of time with Art Tech, the Gap CEO around 2014 replaced these individuals or these powerful individuals called creative directors by a collective creative ecosystem fueled by data analytics. At that point in time, using Google Analytics, Google Trends, social media, listening to their own databases and so on and so forth. So the big story here was transforming the entire fashion value from the creative designers and firing the creative designers and creating from a single point a uh, single point product development process to a product ecosystem which leverages big data now now what in the initial phases of using big data for predictive analytics data streams allowed companies to understand consumer journeys collect a lot of data in the checkouts the footprints they collected the cookies and so on and so forth and mine the data to figure out uh, the triggers to identify consumers behavior their loyalty towards brands and then led up to the recommendation engine which we're so familiar with trying the uh, kind of predicting what kind of products the consumers would prefer by con uncovering uh, patterns from past purchases could develop heuristics to create to treat to, to actually decipher what future consumers want however the important problem like other than uh, i mean predicting fashion is not such an easy process however good your algorithms are it is difficult to predict fashion because the consumer cannot imagine the change in fashion and would not know while, while an individual might have a taste, it's going to be very difficult for them to say what collective taste, so euphemistically called the fashion, would be something that one would be attracted to over a period of time. The other important thing is consumers, actually the buyers of fashion, actually believe that they are they make rational choices. However, in fashion, consumers are you know are actually swayed by social context information framing biases so there's a bit of a gaming that happens in consumers by different brands and therefore it is very difficult to predict with great accuracy the changing consumer preferences so what does that leave us with so if you go back to about eight to ten years around uh, around that time frame most retailers were using big data to inform to or get informed or what are the particular product groups which customers are liking and therefore amplifying those products and exiting products which does not have buying patterns right and therefore they would abandon those products the big big difference that gap made was to use data for product development once the creative directors were fired gap went on to investing time and energy to accurately predict fashion trends and responding to them to take on the threat from uh, you know fast fashion uh, like H&M or Zara which had mastered the art for an incumbent player like Gap which was reliant on individual creative directors to who made this a uh, kind of a mystique process to move it into a database process was a very big shift which laid the foundation of Gap to using technology to deliver needs or unmet needs of the customer. So that's the start point. Now, now, now the important question is, if I started there, what did Gab do next to use, to make a strategic choice and therefore leverage technology to amplify the choice? At this point in time, I will just do a quick recap on the notion of strategy. I mean, I'm not sure all of you have seen it, but just to, for new viewers, uh, strategy is obviously a set of decisions which a firm makes on a particular market that it chooses to deliver uniqueness or a value proposition which drives the wedge between the willingness to pay of the consumer and the cost incurred to deliver the product or the service. And then there are a set of activities that enable the value to be delivered in all my hypotheses i've said a strategy is what you make and the activities which is the last end of the 
the fulcrum is where you actually use technology to deliver the advantage to the consumers that you are targeting so therefore in my entire narrative digital is about the using or framing the right set of activities which will enable you to deliver the advantage which cannot be done in today's day and age depending upon the changes of preferences the consumers buying habit through an analog process and that's where it comes to play now let's see how gap has done it differently than the other companies now if you look at the strategic choice that gap makes is taking into account the trends of behaviors of the customer and the environmental trends so it picks on three trends and says that brands are going to drive those trends through its entire distinctiveness of offer and the activities now what are those trends if for the first one is hyper casualization which basically alludes to how people are dressing now this has taken a big shift after covid right as as many people as most of us are kind of kind of working from home so the fashion of working from home in a digital environment is fundamentally different than if you were to going out and going to office and uh, whatever right so so that's the first big change the second important thing is how consumers are shopping so as the storefronts become more and more irrelevant how do you give a consumers your consumers a seamless omni-channel experience which is frictionless and intuitive and therefore purpose and values and how consumers are feeling on what you're buying and therefore the materials that go into it the frugality of the supply chain and the sustainability of the products so gap says that i will pick on my strategic choices is brands that deliver are and kind of completely aligned to how consumers are dressing, which is the product portfolio and which is hyper casualization. How are they engaging with the consumer, which is through the omni channel service, integrating multiple channels, and so on and so forth, and the purposes and what does the brand stand for? So, that is the big strategy for GAP. Now, its markets. Now, these markets are depending upon its brand. So, for instance, the, the, the classical GAP brand is for is for people which are not price sensitive but who look for affordable classic and convenient styling old navy is mass merchandise it is for people looking for affordability athleta is a woman's only health system brands like banana republic is for a market which is not price sensitive now the big advantage that grab is driving it is saying that i'm going to deliver across my suit of brands what matters most to the consumer and therefore it is distinctiveness in its offer across all its brands to build a brand salience which is relevant to the consumer the first one is obviously the gap brand where it talks about modern american optimism which is the champion of the american style across cultures across age groups and across geographies the second one which is old navy which is the most affordable uh, brand of its portfolio of brands it is uniquely advantaged in the intersection of it gives you value it has curated content and it takes on fast fashion like zara and h&m in terms of its product life cycle now if it is athleta which is the women's brand it is about creating a community for women around health and fitness and empowering the community of strong powerful and confident women all of this then gave four delivers not only is the distinctiveness of the offer the second proposition is the omni-channel ecosystem where gap and its multiple channels be it the storefront be it the delivery ecosystem be it mobile apps or this online portals actually integrate to curate experiences uniquely for you now what are once we've talked about the advantages what are specific digital activities which amplify these advantages this is where technology comes to play once i have decided on my strategy i have decided on the advantage that i'm offering to the specific customer uh, segments that i want to target across my brands the first important thing uh, which i want to call out in terms of caps strategy is integrating initiatives that are designed to deliver the advantage so it, it is very focused on targeted product communications and it creates micro communities on which it is targeting curated content example is trend seekers or active achievers or carpool parents which are very unique segments and it does communication to them for them and kind of products that the gap portfolio delivers to them and obviously after that it is the personalization now personalization at scale a lot of people have done it 
but to doing an enduring customer relationship requires a huge amount of curated data sciences content to give right data in the right platform at the right point in time which induces the consumer to engage effectively to you as against pushing generic content from multiple data sources <clears throat> so the differences that i want to call out in this use of technology is while we talk about, a lot of people talk of omnichannel and a lot of people talk about personalization but very few can create multiple personas of the client and figure out what kind of content at which platform at what timing can with the delivery makes engagement most optimal obviously it has world-class mobile platforms all of them are very excellent and easy to use and intuitive which amplifies this case another example of digital a, a digital strategy playing out to deliver what it intends to deliver which is delivering what more matters most to the consumer and finally on the supply chain and the delivery mechanism it has used a digital technology to bust costs and uh, and productivity and actually improve productivity by figuring out the supply chain dynamics inventory holding costs delivery channels hyper local delivery and so on and so forth so, so this part is also fairly well known the limited point that I'm making, like I made in my other uh, company examples also, that these are specific applications of digital use cases, which are done in the context of the strategy that you have uh, developed for yourself and the specific advantage that you want to, to deliver to your consumers. In this case, the brand salience and the brand promise and the multi-channel experience of the consumer is what gaps want to deliver a far cry from being a product out ecosystem which was what classical big behemoth fashion retailing was all about so it's listening to the consumer it is engaging the consumer and delivering the the product which the consumer values most as again saying here is the portfolio of products that my creative desi uh, designers have decided for you hashtag go buy and hashtag be happy with it so moving on, the big, uh, big two takeaways from the gas case study, uh, from the gas discussion, uh, gap discussion, sorry, is delivering what matters. Now, delivering what matters is easier said than done as consumer tastes and the understanding of individuals' uh, taste buds and fashion senses change very rapidly. And the ability to discover what's changing on the product and the experience fund is a very, very big ask and doing it at the scale of Gap is really commendable. The other thing is discovering how to make the experience real. So it's not only about the product, but it is about the convenience of shopping. It is about the curated experience that that uh, Gap delivers to its consumer and engaging at a hyper-personalized level is what the what makes Gap special. And therefore it leverages data sciences across the fashion value chain from designing trends to product development, curating experiences, engaging consumers, taking consumer feedback, creating unique sets of consumers and delivering it to the point at a price which is affordable and consistent with its brand promise. Just a second. With that, let us now move on to the yes. So, so Gap again is an amplifier of the fact that uh, Digital is not a standalone strategy. It is in the context of a distinctive strategy that you put out in the past. So if you are a part of the digital transformation journey, figure out your strategy, figure out whom you're going to serve for what outcomes and what is your unique proposition. Once this is clear to you, then use technology to deliver the advantage much better than your competitors. If you follow this route, the likely you're going to be a digital leader. Now, all of this is obviously not meant for digital incumbents, but people, but people who are in analog businesses who are trying to pivot into using digital to change their business and operating models. Hope you like this video. Do like, share, comment as you deem fit. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.